Happy Monday, all you mentees. Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Captain America by Nick Spencer Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on February 14th or 15th, depending on where you get your books. So what we're looking at here is the Alex Ross cover. This is the direct market cover. On the left hand side is your standard edition cover, that one by Jesus Saiz. And again, there is a difference in the spine. Sometimes Marvel does that. Uh, sometimes they don't, but lately they've been doing that between the direct market and the standard edition cover. But I did want to point out that there's a different spine as well as a different cover. Well, let's shift the focus back to this. I'm so glad they decided to use this cover. Alex Ross is a big fan of Captain America. He's the one that designed the Captain America Bucky Barnes costume, and he's uh, the one that helped out with this costume design, I want to say. Uh, but yes... Big fan of this costume. What the heck does this even mean? Well, it's a take on that classic Captain America issue. The very first one from the Golden Age. But why is he punching this old guy? And why is Winter Soldier down here? Well, we're going to find out a little bit about those stories here in a second. But just wanted to showcase this right here. There's a little bit of a blurb up here. Spencer's dark take on a compromise. Steve Rogers is the perfect metaphor for our troubled times from the comic book resources. Interesting blurb. And Captain America by Nick Spencer, Daniel Acuna, Angel Unzueta, Javier Piña, Paul Renaud, and Jesus Saiz. And there you have Sam down there, Marvel Omnibus. And then the back, which is that shape of the shield right there with these two caps. Who's this guy? When exactly does all this take place? Uh, the other thing I was going to say is some of this has already been collected in these two complete collections right here. Captain America, Sam Wilson, or rather, Sam Wilson, Captain America, but really the spines say Captain America, Sam Wilson. Uh, some of it was collected in here, and then some of it collected in this volume right here. So it's a two-volume set. However, it doesn't collect the other stuff that's in here, so this has more. Before we even get to open it up, though, I want to say that this reads right after the events of Nick Spencer's Captain America, if you're reading this in chronological order. Of course, that takes place after Ed Brubaker's run. So, in case you're reading these in omnibus format, this goes right after the Rick Remender omnibus. There is going to be talk of some spoilers, because even the title spoils some of the things that are happening in the story. So, just in case you don't want to hear anything, and you just want to get to the... No, even the extras. Nope, don't even look at the extras. The extras will spoil some of the story for you. You just want to look at the binding and what the pages look like, the paper? Sure, uh, just skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp in the description of the video. There are two ongoing titles here. And one of the titles, well, it's a little bit of a spoiler. So, again, don't want to spoil it for anybody. But before we even talk about that, before even uh, just giving you all a heads up, let's look at it underneath the dust jacket right here with these two opposing forces and the shape of the shield in front of them. Now, we can put up the little graphic. There we go. Not going to go into detail as to how a lot of these things happen, but I do going to give you a heads up, just in case. So, you've been warned. All right, let's dive into this book. Okay, let's crack this open. We have some navy blue pages, I like that, or end paper, rather. And here is a nice shot of... The new Captain America and this young man right there. So Captain America by Nick Spencer. Here is all your credits. Where you're going to find each issue. Or not where you're going to find, I'm sorry. Uh, who the creators are behind each of these stories. So there is quite a bit collected in here. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And talk about what led to Sam Wilson being Captain America. Well that can be found in the pages of... The Rick Remender omnibus Captain America. Now, in there, Captain America, Steve Rogers, has been restored to his natural age. So he's an old man. He can't carry the shield anymore. So he gives it to his friend, Sam Wilson. We've seen that 
before, right? We've seen others pick up the shield and become Captain America, whether it was John Walker or whether it was Bucky Barnes and now Sam Wilson. And it is a different type of Captain America. And there's nothing wrong with that because Bucky Barnes himself was <laughs> Captain America and he was a lot different. Now, this collects Captain America Sam Wilson 1 through 17. Captain America Steve Rogers, that's why I told people to go ahead and jump into the uh, binding of the book. 1 through 11, Avengers Standoff, Welcome to Pleasant Hill, Avengers Standoff, Assault on Pleasant Hill Alpha, and Avengers Standoff, Assault on Pleasant Hill Omega. Civil War to the Oath, just the one shot, and then material from Free Comic Book Day 2016, Captain America number one. This book has 888 pages, and again, Retails for $100. So we kick it off with Sam Wilson's story. And I'm going to talk about the mapping here in a little bit. So it is uh, Sam Wilson not being accepted by everybody being Captain America. And that makes sense. Not everybody accepted Bucky. Definitely not everybody accepted John Walker as their new Captain America. And he's okay with that. He, he knows that that comes with the job. But he still has a job to do. We see him forming a bigger relationship with Misty Knight. He, <laughs> D-Man is back. I love the fact they brought back Dennis uh, Duff, Dunphy, uh, who's this obscure character uh, from the 80s. They brought him back, and he has a new costume, an actual cool costume this time around. And ironically enough, it kicks off with Sam Wilson getting on a plane to take off somewhere. And he's sitting be uh, between these two people that are finally recognize who he is. And they're asking the same questions that the reader is. Like, why aren't you flying? Can't Falcon fly? Don't you have a Quinjet? And he's actually answering them as best as he can. Now, this takes him uh, to the Sons of the Serpent storyline, where he has to intervene in this plot that they have. And Captain America, well, no longer Captain America, but ex-Captain America, well, I guess once Captain America, always Captain America. But Steve Rogers shows up and tells him that he can't do that it's beyond his jurisdiction, so he has to stand down. Because for some reason, the Sons of the Serpents are protected, but you'll see what that means here in a little bit. But one of the best things about this run is the return of this right here. I did not expect to find that. I read these in trade paperback. Not the complete collections I showed earlier, but the smaller trays as they were coming out. And I was just like, what? People wanted this? I love the fact this, that Cap Wolf is back. But it's not really just Cap Wolf. Now it's, I guess, Foul Cap Wolf, as they call it. And that's what makes an appearance here. So immediately that, to me, brings back a lot of the 90s memories. But I'm a big fan of Mark Runewald's run. And Cap Wolf was always, you know, one of these things that a lot of people hated. But I thought it was pretty fun. Well, mainly because Wolverine showed up in that story arc. So Dr. Malice is doing a lot of experiments here. And he is Cap Wolf for a while. Sons of the Serpent are attacking. And then we get an introduction of this very important character. There's a couple of introductions here. Uh, two I'm going to be talking about. So this is a character that we meet through these pages of the new Sam Wilson Captain America. And this is Joaquin uh, Torres. Or Joaquin Torres. Who, from the look of this, and the color scheme, will become an important character. A more of a sidekick character. Now, through some experimentation, he does get wings, and he has other kinds of powers. But that's right, he is going to become, just showing what the gutter curve looks like before we come back to that, focus on that, and of course what a white page looks like, and then we'll talk a little bit about that. But he does become the new Falcon. So, this is a character that actually appeared in the Falcon Winter Soldier miniseries, and he, he does uh, make an appearance here. He's a little bit different than that series. I don't know. Maybe they, they bring him back. And then after the first six issues, we get the Avengers. Uh, what is this? The standoff. Welcome to Pleasant Hill. So Welcome to Pleasant Hill is a brand new storyline that it doesn't really focus on Captain America, Sam Wilson, or Steve Rogers. But the ramifications of it will bring in a new series. Now, we also meet another new character through here. And this is, oh, what is her name? Uh, April, is it Mackenzie? April Lit Mackenzie? Um, April uh, Kincaid. Kincaid, that's what it is. So she becomes an important character in a little bit, but her first appearance are through these early issues of Sam Wilson. And basically what this does, by the ending of this, we get Steve Rogers back 
to his young look. So that's why he, there's another title in here called Captain America. Now to celebrate the big 75th anniversary with Steve Rogers coming back, there's a couple of uh, back story, backup stories here. One of them by, this is Joss Whedon and uh, John Cassidy. But my favorite one that I have to talk about is this little short story by, oh my gosh, the late Tim Cell. I keep It's so weird to talk about Tim Cell in past tense. Uh, Tim Cell. I love this story. It's it's a little silent story with a little bit of dialogue in here just between Steve's mom and Steve when he was a little boy. He goes and breaks into a Hydra station and in there there's a U.S. Army vault and you get to find out what's in there. And it was something special between him and his father. And you can find out what it is by reading the book. I just thought it was such a special short little story and to celebrate Captain America's 75th anniversary. Now, of course, you may be wondering, wait a minute, if Steve Rogers is back, then why is Sam Wilson still Captain America? And that's a good question, because even Sam Wilson is questioning, well, why am I still Captain America if you're here? That doesn't really make sense. And it really does to Captain America, to Steve Rogers. He said, I chose you. You're my friend, and this world is very lucky to have you as Captain America. So he introduces his friend as Captain America, and yes, Chance is there. Uh, we have the beginning of the AmeriCop storyline. And the Free Comic Book Day kicks off to start this new series with Jesus Saiz, who I think this is my favorite artwork he's done. I love his art. He does the colors. Rachel uh, Rosenberg later on joins him. And I forgot to talk about the artist on Sam Wilson. That is Daniel Acuna. Well, honestly, it took me a long time to appreciate his art. He's the one that worked on Flash, but before that he did the series called uh, the Freedom Freedom Fighters, Uncle Sam the Freedom Fighters. And I just thought it was okay. It's got like a painted look, a little bit like uh, Dan Brereton. But for some reason, the older I got, the more I dug it. So I was, I was okay with it. I actually enjoyed it during this time. It's got some nice covers. And it, like I said, it's got that painted look. But he's the one that draws that. But he's not alone. You also have Phil uh, Paul Renaud. Sorry, not Phil Renaud. Uh, you have Joe Bennett doing some of the stuff in here. Mark Bagley doing the standoff issue. You can definitely tell that's Mark Bagley's artwork. And then Jesus Saiz and... Who's the... I think that's Angel Unzueta, if I'm not mistaken. But Jesus Saiz is the artist on Captain America, Steve Rogers. At least the first couple of issues, and then eventually Javier Pina takes over. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this without going into spoilers. Read this for yourself. There's a lot of people out there that were upset without even having read the comic book and that happens a lot it's always happened since i've been reading comics people are upset because of hearsay or what they hear about their characters and without context like it, it, of course you have every right to be upset there's something that happens in here uh with the character of captain america he's being written in a different type of way that he's never been written before starting with the first issue and i'm sure if you've been following memes or you've been on the internet you know exactly what i'm talking about and people were upset not everybody people that are reading the book are like oh that makes sense because you know that's the story that he's telling in there but it's a different take on captain america so be prepared for that and read it and make judgment for yourself and you'll see what i mean uh, don't don't stay away from the story because you've seen other people upset. I can't believe they're doing this to Captain America. It happens all the time. Believe me. Uh, you know, you read comics long enough and you're going to see people hate on things they haven't even touched or read. So it makes sense. There's a lot of returning villains here. And the only thing I will say that takes... Oh, gosh. Yeah, people were upset about that. I was upset about this. Rage. I, I'm not going to go into spoilers, but I wasn't the biggest fan of Nick Spencer's version of Rage. Rage, to me, should have been more in control, especially after those issues of New Warriors Omnibus Volume 2. Oh, man. I was That's the one that upset me. But anyway, uh, neither here nor there. What the hell was I talking about? I don't even remember. I just get a little upset about my New Warriors when they're mistreated. And it's not even mistreated. It's just, it's not really the character that you think, oh... He's grown into this type of character. Now, what I was going to say, that's what I was going to say, is uh, there is a Civil War II tie-in. A lot of the Sam Wilson stories in here have a Civil War II tie-in. But you don't get the Civil War II story except for that one shot. 
So it can get a little confusing if you don't know what's going on. For the matter of fact, there's a death of a character and Sam is speaking at their funeral, giving a speech, and you're like, whoa, they died? What the heck? So if you need to, if you're a completist, then definitely read Civil War 2, at least before reading the uh, Take Back the Shield storyline. So before issue uh, number 14, you need to read Civil War 2. And speaking of uh, reading and how this is mapped, this is perfect. Like, issues of Captain America Steve Rogers, they do three issues of that, and then they jump back to Captain America Sam Wilson, and it's a natural flow. You don't feel like you miss anything, so they're not doing it month by month. It's not like you do Captain America uh, Steve Rogers number one, and then you jump to Captain America. America, Sam Wilson, number 10, back to Steve Rogers, 2, back to Sam Wilson, 11. It's not that, and it's a good thing because they're broken up into story arcs, and it doesn't interrupt the flow of the ongoing story. So I appreciate that they made, well, this is mapped like uh, X-Men to me. The way that they mapped X-Men, they thought about it ahead of time. Ooh, we've got other ongoing series, and we really can't interrupt the flow of this particular story. So rest assured... It's not mapped like the trade paperbacks. You know, they don't have all of Steve Rogers on one part of the omnibus and the other part being Sam Wilson. It's actually mapped with some thought. So I really appreciate whenever they do that. Where are all these characters in Steve Rogers' past? I found that storyline to be pretty interesting. But again, it is a little bit slowed down by the Civil War II stories. You start seeing these flash forwards of what's to come. As a matter of fact, this omnibus ends on a big cliffhanger. Because this isn't really the ending of Nick Spencer's run. I mean, he went on to write more Captain America. And I don't know if we're going to get a second omnibus or not. But I hope that we do. Because to wrap up his run, that would be great. And my goodness, what I meant to say about Jesus Saiz is his artwork just... It reminds me of that style that Carlos Pacheco had. That style that he perfected throughout the years. Another creator gone way too soon. But that's what I really enjoyed about him. It really reminded me of that style, that realistic... I don't know, I always thought Pacheco's art was the new age uh, Alex Raymond type of artist. And that's what uh, Jesus Saiz reminds me of. Love it. It's this realistic style. And, man, it's so good. Then you have Daniel Acuna back on the book. Hey, Rage. And then you have the final story arcs right here, wrapping up both Sam Wilson and Captain America and getting ready for something big. A big story that's uh, Nick Spencer started building on with the first issue of Steve Rogers. And this volume ends with Civil War II, The Oath. And this is drawn by Phil Noto. And this is really the setup for what happens in the next volume. While it's a Civil War II story, or in the aftermath of Civil War II, this really does help set up what are things to come for Captain America, both Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers. The extras. So we have some variants here. This is the John Cassidy variant with Laura Martin on colors. Mahmoud Azrar, Steve Epting variants, making sure these don't spoil anything. This is the take on Captain America number one. So I guess, is it a legacy variant? Um, nope, doesn't say it's a legacy variant. But this is what the direct market cover is based on. Is Captain America punching Hitler and you have Bucky down there. And some more Civil War II variant there. Steranko black and white variants. Does Sam Wilson really need a winged sidekick if he himself can fly? Sure, why not? Maybe he doesn't want to go up and rescue the cat while he's busy beating the living crud out of Crossbones. I love this Arthur Adams variant. These are the connecting variants, I think, of Alpha and Omega. Yeah, Salt on Pleasant Hill. Toy variants by John Tyler Christopher, which we've seen a lot. Scotty Young. I think, yeah. Oh, Joe Mad. I thought that was Ed McGinnis for a second. Even recognize. I'm losing it. Losing my touch, man. Or my eyes. Something. This is the only thing that was missing from the actual Sam Wilson issues. These are the recap pages as to what's happened previously. But when you're not reading it monthly, I think it makes sense to put it all the way in the back. So they did include it, but it's back here. 
That way the story is interrupted by... Wait, I just read this. Kind of like watching a TV show, like a weekly TV show, but you're binge watching it. So you skip through those previously on whatever. Is that Lost? That was X-Men. Let's try to remember which one originated that previously on whatever show you were watching. That's what I'm trying to say. Character designs, including Flag Smasher there. And then the end of the book, 888 pages. Now let's look at the eye. All right, so here is the eye for the people coming back that didn't want any kind of spoilers. 888 pages, it has sewn binding. Let's look at the way it lays over. Here's the way it lays over towards the beginning. I believe this is pages five and six, I would assume. You have to hold it down a little bit to see like the jawline right here, to see Misty's right leg, see all the guns. So there's a little bit of a gutter curve, but that always happens towards the beginning. So just a little bit of gutter loss right there. About the middle of the book, but I wanted you to focus on the white here. So for the people that are wondering about the bleed through, you do get a little bit, but I mean, this is an all white page with the exception of the shield right there. So you get a little bit of the art bleeding through where you may see some of the word bubbles bleed through, but uh, let me see if I can find another page or the way. Actually, let's look at the way this lays over towards the back of the book where we have a lot of whites and these are just recap pages. So not much of spoilers. But you can kind of see some of the character designs bleed through from the opposite page right here. So, there you go. That's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you are a fan of Captain America and you just have to have all the Captain America in omnibus format. If you read these issues in trade paperback or single issues or complete collections, I would love to know what you think about the book and the stories. If you have any questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. Thank you so much to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.